Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Vertical Flight Society's 78th Annual Grand Award Ceremony. I'm Mike Hirschberg, your Executive Director, and I want to thank you for coming to Forum 78, where I hope we've, I hope we've been exceeding your expectations. We're trying out this new format of a breakfast banquet instead of a, instead of a dinner banquet, so I hope you all enjoy it. We're very interested in your feedback on all aspects of the forum, and in particular this morning's uh, awards program to decide if we should continue this as a new tradition. The annual forum has once again proved itself to be the biggest and best vertical flight technical conference in the world, with some 220 technical papers printed this week and well over 1,200 attendees. And this is the first time we've sold out our exhibit hall in at least a decade. We really appreciate everyone's enthusiasm for advancing vertical flight coming out in person this year and supporting VFS. I would like to thank our sponsor, Bell, for this 78th annual Grand Award Ceremony. We appreciate so much the support of all of our sponsors and exhibitors who believe in the mission of the Vertical Flight Society and without whom the forum would not be possible. At this time, I'd like to invite Glenn Isbell, Bell's Vice President of Rapid Prototyping and Testing, to give a welcome. Glenn? All right, thank you, uh, and welcome to, I guess, the first breakfast uh, banquet that we've had. Uh, I appreciate Mike and the VFS um, group of having us here and letting us speak. As you know, this is a really exciting time in Bell's history. Bell is a, uh, at a unique place where we're big enough to do really, really innovative things, like the V280 Valor, um, press the envelope on different, um, different other products. But we do, we're able to do commercial, manned, unmanned, um, alternately powered vehicles all in one place. Uh, and we, it's a really exciting time, right? We're big enough, but we're also small, we do real things, but we're small enough to be and be really, we believe, the innovator, the innovation leader uh, across the business. Um, one of the things we're always doing is looking for people with those kind of minds, those mindset, um, people that want to think differently, people that uh, are, are, are technically inclined, uh, business inclined and not in, and impatient, right? Not, um, not okay with how everything always is. Um, we're actively looking, oh, for more than 86 years, Bell has been going and creating these type of products, right? We've created, you saw some on the video from the X1, um, tilt rotors, helicopters, uh, jet packs, all, all different kinds of ways to put uh, man in flight. As we, we, and at Bell, we have a culture of camaraderie, commitment, and, and where customers have recognized and, and, our, and employees have recognized us where we've got a lot of different awards from best product design teams to best engineering teams, development teams. And this is a great event this morning to really recognize the industry. As for the last several days, everybody has been together sharing ideas from technical, from operations, and those kind of things. The best part about today is, is I don't have to pronounce everybody's names as we are um, given the award, so that'll be good for me personally. Um, so anyway, I just want to welcome everybody. I hope you enjoy the breakfast. 
Uh, I hope that the last several days have been good. Um, there's, there's a lot of great talent, a lot of great um, uh, intellect in the room, and hopefully that these kind of things are able to um, just get us all together. We're going to really uh, acknowledge some great accomplishments across the industry today. Uh, and so um, give these people um, the applause that they need, they deserve, as we go through and, and, um, and, and celebrate their success. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn, and thanks again to Bell for supporting VFS and sponsoring this morning's grand award ceremony. The annual forum only happens through the countless hours of support from our members who unselfishly volunteer their time, such as the members of the Technical Council and the Technical Committees, the chairs and co-chairs of 41 technical sessions and nine special sessions, more than 75 student volunteers, and many, many others. A special thanks to the members of the VFS Southwest chapter who volunteered their time in supporting the forum this week. And of course, a special thanks to the hundreds of authors and co-authors who provide the core technical content for the forum. But coordination of these efforts of these volunteers would not be possible if not for the small but extremely dedicated VFS headquarters staff who handle all the behind the scenes details that make the, the forum possible. So if you see someone with a green staff ribbon, please tell them what you think about this year's forum, good or bad. Julie, David, Valerie, Randy, Betty, Alka, and Jim, that's just seven people, folks. Thank you so much for your Herculean efforts in putting together another fantastic forum. Let's give them a hand. And you'll see Jim Sherman up here, who's the VFS Director of Strategic Development, who will be assisting today with the presentation of the awards. In addition to our professional staff, I want to recognize VFS members Dr. Cliff Smith and Dr. Anita Tracy for their decades of dedicated support of all the audiovisual needs of the forum, and Dan Gettinger of VFS is our scriptwriter for the banquet and the exhibit hall announcements, as well as a voice you hear in the exhibit hall. Now the, the Vertical Flight Society would like to present its 2022 membership awards, recognizing those who have been the most active recruiters of new members between April 1st of last year and March 31st of this year. The board's vice president of membership, John Tatro, will make those awards. When I heard we were going to this breakfast format, I was just really geared up and excited about it and so on and so forth and dr dreaming about it actually and then uh, my alarm went off. So, I don't know, we'll get, we'll get your votes on this format. I kind of like it as starting the day. I came armed with uh, rubber chicken jokes, unfortunately, though, and, and I find myself facing Egg McMuffin, so I, didn't, I don't have anything in, in that area. So we start off with the membership awards because this society is all about you all, and it's the most important aspect of the whole group is us together. And for those of you that are new to the Vertical Flight Society, uh, if you don't know already, you'll come to learn over time as you work in this area that it's not rocket science, it's uh, more difficult than that. We've got one of the most complex trade spaces, I think, of any endeavor in the vertical lift business. And this society brings together the finest minds in the globe, all across the globe, in fact, not just the, the U.S., but internationally, together at one place once a year. Uh, to interact, network, and learn from each other. So I hope you're enjoying your stay here, and at the end we'll talk about where we'll be next year. So kicking off uh, the awards this year, we had the, the Net Increase Award. 126 members was added by the San Francisco chapter. Big hand for them, 126 members. Uh, receiving this award will be Haley, come on up, just like Price is Right, Haley Cummings, Natasha Schatzman, Shanab Withrow Masser, and ha, 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 you guys didn't, you changed something on me. Wavani J. Raman, am I even close? Come on up here, what are you doing down there? Give 
All right, so the, the next thing, because we're engineers, we got to do percent increase, because it's not just the number of heads, it's, it's percentages and so forth. And we got another whopper here, a 200% increase was achieved by the South Florida chapter. Big hand to them. Accepting that award, Phil Aldrich and Nicole Yurick. Come on up. All right, now this next award, this is really something else. We're always looking for kind of out of the box thinking, and you know, I got a hockey buddy, Ed, Ed Smith. Is Professor Smith in the room here? Where is he? Wave your hand, Dad. Right over here. Aha, good morning, Ed. Listen up here, would you? And all those like you. Uh, this, this next award is for sponsoring the most members, and we had a, a genius come up with this brilliant idea to offer his students the ability to either write a term paper or join the Vertical Flight Society. And whammo, we got 41 new members. <laughs> so um, I, I, I jest. But uh, our own beloved uh, Professor Dave Peters, come on up, University of Washington, St. Louis. We love you. Now, for getting more than 20 members and winning this award, uh, the prof good professor here also got free airfare, registration, and hotel. So, for next year, we'll be at West Palm Beach, our 80th year, the 79th Forum. You, too, can get free airfare, hotel, and registration if you win this award with more than 20 folks. So, challenge you all to go for it and be the next uh, Professor David Peters. Uh, with that, need no introduction from me. I'd like to bring up uh, our technical director, Dr. Marilyn Smith from Georgia Tech. Thank you, John. You had us in stitches as always. All righty. So, good morning, everyone. It's my great pleasure to ask the Forum 78 technical chair Mike Duffy from Electric Power Systems to come forward and be recognized for his prodigious efforts in helping to pull together a great forum here in Fort Worth. So being a forum chair is an awful lot of work, and I know that since I was a forum chair of uh, Forum 70. Michael devoted a tremendous amount of effort uh, and time over the last year to make Form 78 the great success that it is. Michael worked with VFS headquarters, our 22 technical committees, and hundreds of authors to create the great technical program that's the hallmark of the forum. Michael, thank you for all of your great efforts, and it's a well-deserved award. Thank you. Now, I also have the pleasure of announcing the Robert L. Lichten Award. This award is given to the technical paper who has not presented previously the results of his or her work at a technical conference. The winner this year is Tim Schmidt from Sikorsky. Tim, please come forward. Tim's paper is entitled Automated Rotor Blade Tip Clearance Tracking Using Artificial Intelligence Algorithms. The paper was presented in yesterday's T&E evaluation session. If you were unable to attend, we encourage you to look for the paper in the forum proceedings. Tim, we're very, very pleased to recognize you with the Robert L. Lichten Award. Okay, at this point, I would like to turn the podium, podium back over to Mike Hirschberg. I'm not a morning person, in case you haven't guessed. <laughs> this is the reason I left industry and went to academia. 
so I don't have to get up so early. And those of you who know me, I am also not a morning person. I am a late, late night person. But uh, Marilyn, oops, sorry, Marilyn, don't go away. So as of uh, June 30th, Marilyn will complete her two-year term of office as a VFS technical director and pass the baton to Dr. Mahendra Bhagwat, the US Army's senior research scientist for air vehicle aerodynamics and preliminary design. As a VFS technical director since July of 2020, Marilyn has been a steadfast leader of the VFS Technical Council, as well as a key member of the executive committee of the VS VFS Board of Directors. Her personal and professional dedication has been very much appreciated over the past two years as we've powered through the pandemic and a host of other challenges and has been an incredible help to both Julie Gibbs, our director of technical uh, programs, and, and to me as the executive director. So Marilyn, we can't thank you enough for all the strong support and, and leadership. So we're gonna get a picture up here, Warren. All right, we're a little rusty still. <laughs> So we're a little rusty and it's early morning and that kind of stuff. So, okay, so now the Vertical Flight Society is pleased to announce the inaugural, inaugural class of DiversaFlight Scholars. VFS created the, the DiversaFlight Scholars program to encour encourage more engineering students from underrepresented demographics to consider careers in vertical flight to meet the future needs of the industry. We invited any student at a US recognized minority serving institution to apply for an all expenses paid trip to the forum and competitively selected three students who had the most passion for our mission of advancing vertical flight. I'd, I'd now like to invite Damian Kloger, Andre Davis, and Patricia Pahe to this stage to receive their recognition. So Damien is an aerospace engineering student at the University of California, Irvine. A first generation college student graduating next month, Damien founded the Futurist Society at UC Irvine in 2020, holding weekly meetings to discuss topics ranging from urban air mobility to space travel. The club has expanded to other schools with more than 1,000 members across the country. Andre is a mechanical engineering student at Howard University in Washington, DC. Andre has a keen interest in robotics, building VTOL drones, and steampunk-inspired contraptions. He's completing his second year at Howard and expects to graduate in 2024. Patricia is an aerospace engineering student at the University of California, Davis, and is also graduating next month. Patricia is also a first-generation college student and recently participated in an internship with eVTOL pioneer WISC in Mountain View, California. So congratulations to each of you, and I hope this week has given you the inspiration and connections for a long career in vertical flight. All right, congratulations. All right, so next, the Vertical, Flight, uh, the Vertical Flight Foundation was established in 1967 as the philanthropic arm of the then American Helicopter Society. Since 1977, this merit-based scholarship program has been a great success story. More than 600 scholarships have been awarded over the past 45 years. The program has greatly expanded over the past decade. More than 220 VFS scholarships total, totaling over $850,000 have been awarded since my first forum as executive director in 2012. This year, the Vertical Flight Society is awarding 22 Vertical Flight Foundation scholarships, again totaling $100,000. So a huge thank you to those of you who have made donations to the VFF over the past year. 
And if you haven't considered, if you haven't uh, contributed recently, please consider making a donation. VFS, VFS covers all administration, administrative costs for VFF. So 100% of your donation goes towards scholarships. And with your, with your support, we've been able to keep our endowment well funded while tripling our annual scholarship awards. Now I'd like to turn the podium over to Dr. Judah Milgram, past chair of the VFF Selection Committee for presentation of this year's VFF awards. Judah? Good morning. <clears throat> Uh, each year, the Society's Vertical Flight Foundation awards merit-based scholarships to students entering or immersed in a rotorcraft education. I'd first like to recognize Sikorsky's Andy Keith for doing the heavy lifting this year uh, as the VFF selection chair. Andy was unable to attend this week, so I'm pleased to be able to make the awards again this year. First, I would like to recognize the members of the Scholarship Selection Committee uh, who performed the difficult process of selecting the outstanding <clears throat> students this year to receive scholarships. Uh, Andy Keith was the chair, uh, John McEwen, Dr. Cliff Smith, Tony Gardner, and Rajneesh Singh. And I'd like to give special thanks to Jeff Sinsei and Julie Gibbs for their support. This year, as mentioned, the Vertical Flight Society is awarding 22 Vertical Flight Foundation scholarships <clears throat> in three categories. These students are the future leaders of vertical flight. The names of the winners who are unable to be here are included in the list and I will read uh, and on the slides uh, uh, up here as well. Now as I call their names, I ask the recipients here today to step forward to the stage and as I announce their names, please hold your applause until the last awardee is announced so all the names can be heard. The bachelor degree scholars in alphabetical order are Eva Alexandrova, Jeffrey Carley, Jaden Slotnik, Radu Teodorescu, Jonah, and Jonah Witt. Are any of the bachelor's recipients here today? Okay. The master's degree scholars in alphabetical order are Jessica Bayer, Jean Bihariani, Noam Kaplan, Nicholas Pasternostro, Derek Anthony Safia Matthew, Sean Kinyip Lim, and Alexander Stillman. Finally, the, uh, the doctorate degree scholars in alphabetical order are uh, Carlotta Bonet, Aaron Crawford, Chloe Johnson, Venkata Krishnan Iyer, uh, Anna Alexandra Kostek, Orazio Pinti, Nilanga Telasinga, uh, Nikos Panagiotos Trembois, Jean-Pierre Throne and Nicholas Zhu. Each of the bachelor scholarships includes a cash award of $3,750, the master students receive $4,000 each, and doctorate scholarship winners each receive $5,000. In addition, the top graduate candidates have received special recognition. Jonah Witt of RPI will receive a total of $6,000 for the Bell Scholarship, while Venkata Krishnan Iyer of Penn State was selected for the $6,000 Dr. Jingyan Scholarship for Cost Awareness. Uh, I'd like to ask all of our winners to stay on the stage for a few more minutes so we can get a group photo. And uh, for everyone else, please enjoy your breakfast and we'll continue our uh, awards program at 8.30.
Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed your breakfast. Before we begin the rest of the awards, I'd like to ask you, the, you to direct your attention to the screens while we honor some of our members who've passed away over the past year. Please observe a moment of silence. Thank you. As we stand on the shoulders of the giants before us, let us remember to give a helping hand to those who are the future. That's what this society is all about, working, to, working together and lifting each other up to advance vertical flight technology. At this time, I'd like to present your host for the rest of the morning, Tomasz Krasinski of Airbus Helicopters, and this year's president of the board and of the vertical, uh, the board, president of the board of the Vertical Flight Society. Tomasz? Thank you, Mike. Huh? So I have seven hours of jet lag. Huh? So if uh, I am telling stupid things, just tell them, put me in the water on the head. It will like me to wake up. So as you, uh, we have the full schedule, Mike. It's really great today. Huh? And I am really very pleased for this uh, moment of the ceremony because our industry is really made by the people. People who have the idea, people who can transform the idea to the realization, people who can take the risk. And recognition of the people is everything, is what this ceremony is about. These people demonstrated the excellence in their area, and it is really purpose of our society to recognize them is also recognize them, for them, and also for all the young generations that we were just uh, saw before, to give the example that really the breakthrough genius idea makes Rotary Wing so successful. So before we will go to the ceremony, I would like to recognize excellent Society Awards Committee, Paul Nemo, the chair of the awards committee, Dr. Marlin Smith of our technical director who was recognized today, Dr. Mariam Hoslagai, the industry representative, and Jürgen Rauleider, the academic representative. Terry Guy, uh, uh, who represents the government. In addition to the Vest Nikolsky Award selection, we had to adjust a bit committee slightly, since uh, Marlin Smith, our uh, current technical director, was one of the nominees. So, uh, Andy Kate is a past technical director, Dr. Mariam. Hoslagi, the industry representative, Dr. Mark White, the academia representative, and Terry Gee, the government representative. So uh, this uh, uh, committee did excellent work. I discussed with them. There were an impressive number of proposals, hundreds of endorsement letters, so you can be sure the dominies really are excellent in their different area. Uh, Dan Gettinger, di Director of Publication and uh, uh, Communication at VFS, will serve as the master ceremony. Uh, I am very happy for this because it's a very difficult role. Announcing the winner, why I present the award with Mike as VS, VFS Executive Director. With that, let me turn podium over to Dan. First, let me say thank you to Tomas for putting me in, in the unlucky position of potentially mispronouncing some names today. 
but I'll do my best. So here we go. We begin our awards today with the Alexander A. Nikolsky Honorary Lectureship. This year, the awards committee has bestowed this high honor on Professor Marilyn Smith, Professor and Director of the Vertical Lift Research Center of Excellence. Professor Smith, would you please come forward? I hope you were able to hear her give the 42nd Annual Nikolsky Lecture on Tuesday. It was entitled Computational Vertical Lift Aeromechanics and Its Future in the 21st Century. Today we honor Professor Marilyn Smith with the Nikolsky Medallion and Certificate. As noted in the introduction to her lecture on Tuesday, Professor Smith's technical and leadership accomplishments over her distinguished career have, had, have been numerous and comprehensive. Marilyn has received many awards, including the Vertical Flight Society's Technical Fellow Award in 2015, two International Leonardo International Fellowship Awards in 2014 and 2012, two NASA Group Achievement Awards in 2007 and 2017, the 2006 Georgia Tech Women in Engineering Faculty Mentoring Excellence Award, and the 2022 AIAA Aeromechanics Award, which was just announced, among many others. Thank you, Professor Smith, and congratulations. The recipient of the Paul E. Houter Award is Dr. Martine Rothblatt of United Therapeutics for her earth-shattering innovations in the fields of communication, medicine, and electric aviation. Dr. Rothblatt, would you please come forward? <laughs> Dr. Rothblatt, a pioneer of Sirius XM satellite radio, a champion for transgender rights, and the founder and CEO of United Therapeutics, has been a driving force for the future of electric VTOL. As an environmentalist and a Bell 429 pilot, Rothblatt recognized that electric flight was key to revolutionize the current transplant organ delivery system. Thanks to her investments and her commitment to electric flight, Rothblatt has driven historic breakthroughs in aviation, beginning in 2016 with the conversion of a Robinson R44 helicopter using an off-the-shelf electric motor, batteries, and motor controller. She co-piloted the Tier 1 ER-44 for a Guinness World Record with a 30 nautical mile flight in 2018. Tier 1 is now preparing electric motor conversion kits for R-44s. In parallel, Dr. Rothblatt has funded electric vertical takeoff landing or eVTOL developments at several other companies, including eHang, Beta Technologies, Piyosaki Aircraft, and Zenith Altitude. She was nominated by Danielle McLean. Thank you, Dr. Rothblatt, for your incredible contributions to advancing vertical flight. The next awards are the VFS Technical Fellows. As I call your name, please step forward to be recognized. Dr. Ashish Bagai, Founder and Principal, Bagai Aero. Professor Kenneth Brentner, Professor of Aerospace Engineering, the Pennsylvania State University. Daniel Walkspress, Senior Associate at Continuum Dynamics. Larry Young, Aerospace Engineer at NASA. Dr. Ashish Bagai is recognized for his seminal contributions to vertical flight over a three-decade career, spanning academia, industry, and government. Dr. Bagai's achievements, notably his pioneering work on designing the rotor blades for Sikorsky's X2 technology demonstrator, and his pioneering eVTOL work at DARPA, have had profound impacts on future vertical lift, eVTOL, and advanced VTOL. Professor Kenneth Brentner is one of the foremost experts in rotorcraft external noise and his work has greatly benefited a wide spectrum of industry, government, and government researchers seeking to understand critical issues in noise for rotorcraft. His technical contributions over 40 years at NASA and Penn State have been of great service to the vertical flight aeroacoustics community. Daniel Walks Press is recognized for his superior technical research that has supported advances in rotary wing aerodynamics and in the critical derivative applications of full, full aircraft aeromechanics and acoustics. He has spearheaded the embodiment of these advanced capabilities in widely used and accessible software tours, tools. Larry A. Young has been the leading NASA researcher and advocate for planetary rotorcraft, resulting in the successful Mars 
Ingenuity Mars helicopter and plans for the Mars Science Helicopter. Young has also conducted groundbreaking research on a range of advanced rotorcraft concepts, fundamental rotor aer aerodynamics, small and full-scale rotor testing, and development of reduced order models with a focus on rotor-wake aerodynamics interactions. We would also like to note that each of these individuals, our newest technical fellows, have made significant contributions to the success of VFS over many years. So thank you, and congratulations. Our next award is the Francois Xavier Bagnot Award, which recognizes outstanding contributions to vertical flight technology by a VFS member age 35 or younger. The winner this year is Patrick Darmstadt of the Boeing Company. Mr. Darmstadt, would you please come forward? Patrick Darmstadt has made significant contributions to vertical lift technology, especially in propulsion systems, drivetrains, and safe electric propulsion. He has 10 years of experience in dynamic system design and technology development. He helped establish an electric propulsion design and analysis capability within Boeing Vertical Lift and is supporting multiple electric propulsion programs at the company. In addition to being an active member of the VFS Propulsion Committee, he is also a member of the SAE Transmission and Driveline Committee. Patrick, it gives VFS great pleasure to present you with this award today. Next, the Grover E. Bell Award. This year's recipient is Sikorsky's Project Convergence 2021 Autonomy Demonstration with an S-70 optionally piloted vehicle. I would like to ask the following team members to please come forward to accept the award on behalf of the team. Michael Barron and Igor. Over the course of 2021, the Sikorsky team demonstrated the capabilities of an autonomous S-70 Blackhawk in support of the objectives of the Army's Project Convergence. In exercises last fall, the autonomous Blackhawk demonstrated the ability to team with two uncrewed air vehicles that deployed in flight and showed how, how an autonomous helicopter may be used to protect and resupply troops in the field. These demonstrations were a foundation of a historic flight of a completely uncrewed Blackhawk earlier this year. Congratulations to everyone on the team. And now the Supplier Excellence Award, which is given to a supplier who, through the quality, innovativeness, and cost-effective technology of its products has made a notable contribution to improving the state of the art of vertical flight aircraft. This year, we are pleased to present the award to Red Viking. I would ask the following individuals from Red Viking to please come forward to accept the award. Chris Lake, Jason Stefanski, Alfredo Flores, Steve Fannin, Jeff Poyer, and Joe Kalantek of Sikorsky. Red Viking designs, builds, and integrates automation and test solutions for some of the largest manufacturers in the world. 
Red Viking's transmission testing capabilities supported the design and builds of Sikorsky's 1.2 million pound production engineering test stand for large helicopter transmissions. Red Viking is recognized for its drive for continuous improvement and investments in its infrastructure to better support its customers. Congratulations to the company on a job well done. The next award is the Leonardo International Fellowship Award. This year's selection is the Turkish Utility Helicopter Program Systems and Test Team, comprised of Sikorsky Aircraft in the US, Turkey's Aselsan, and Turkish Aerospace. The award will be accepted by Hakan Ursan of Aselsan, Duygu Barin of Turkish Aerospace, and Michael Skaggs of Sikorsky. Together, the Turkish Utility Helicopter Program Systems and Test Team conducted an extraordinary international cooperative effort to design, develop, and test a new avionics system with state-of-the-art industry standards. The avionics system was then integrated into the prototype and production line of the T-70, the Turkish aerospace-produced variant of the S-70 Blackhawk. The team performed a successful first flight of the prototype at the Aselsan facility in Ankara. We would like to thank the members of the Turkish Utility Helicopter Programs Systems and Test Team for their contributions to international cooperation and collaboration. Now the Robert L. Pinckney Award. It goes to the 3D printed aircraft parts team at Sikorsky. I would like to invite Anthony Boscato to please come forward to accept the award on behalf of the, t the entire team. The team successfully developed and implemented a 3D printed parts on a Black Hawk production aircraft, a first for Sikorsky, as well as, for the company, as well as on the company's Raider X competitive prototype. The Sikorsky team demonstrated that 3D printing is a viable, lower cost, higher quality, and faster alternative to, all tra to traditional methods of manufacturing aircraft parts. The team paved the way for exponential growth in the use of 3D printed for both printing for both flyaway parts and tooling. Congratulations. Next is the Harry T. Jensen Award. It is presented to the Sikorsky Usage and Load Monitoring Team. Please come forward as I call your names to accept the award on behalf of the entire team. Raymond Beal, Brian Lefevre, Avinash Sarlashkar, and Matt Harrigan. The team has recognized it for its development of world-class fleet usage monitoring capabilities, which have proven invaluable through the multiple fleet sustainment needs and investigations related to safety, reliability, logistics, and maintainability for the S-92, H-60, and CH-148 fleets. These efforts culminated in 2021 with the in initial release of a web-based engineering tool called Rotorcraft Digital Twin, an important milestone toward developing a complete Rotorcraft Digital Twin mode. Congratulations to the entire team. The Howard Hughes Award. It's the huge silver trophy over here on the table, which you may have seen in the exhibit hall. This year, the trophy goes to the Mars Helicopter Ingenuity Team, which includes members from the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, NASA Ames and Langley Research Centers, AeroVironment, Qualcomm, Sol Aero, University of Maryland, and Lockheed Martin. I would like to ask the following team representatives to please come forward. David Buecher of Lockheed Martin Space, Dr. Brad Clev Clevenger of Sol Aero, Dr. Anubhav Datta of the University of Maryland, Johnny Lamb of NASA JPL, Ben Pippenberg of AeroVironment, Christopher Bruting of Qualcomm Technologies, Chris Van Buten of Sikorsky, Larry and Larry Na Young of NASA. The team is recognized for accomplishing the first powered flight on another planet on April 19, 2021 with a 39.1 second flight of the four pound, 1.8 kilogram Ingenuity helicopter on Mars. Just over a year later, the Ingenuity continues to perform its remarkable mission. To date, the Ingenuity has made 28 successful flights, traveled over four miles, and logged more than 50, mile, 50 minutes aloft. 
With these first controlled flights on another planet, vertical flight has again proven its unique contributions and provided some of the most exciting space news since the Apollo days. And to recognize the small role of VFS, NASA's Yer Larry Young proposed the idea of a Mars helicopter for the 1999 VFS student design competition. It was sponsored that year by Sikorsky and supported by Chris Van Buten. The University of Maryland uh, student team, led by Anubhav Datta, was the winner with a design very similar to the Ingenuity. Mr. Datta, Dr. Datta later consulted for the JPL for several years on Ingenuity's development. But to recognize the members of the team with our prestigious Howard Hughes Award. Mm -hmm. Our next award is the Frederick L. Feinberg Award, presented to the vertical flight aircraft pilot or crew who demonstrated outstanding skills or achievement during the preceding calendar year. Sponsored by Common Corporation, the award honors the memory of an outstanding helicopter test pilot and an exemplary person. In addition to sponsoring the award, Common provides monetary award to the winners. I would like to invite Bill Teropoulos from Common Aerospace Air Corporation on stage to present the award. This year's, oh. this year's award goes to the Bell V280 Experimental Test Pilot Team. Derry Glover, Don Grove, Ernie McGuinness, and Paul Ryan, please come forward. The Bell V280 experimental test pilot team safely performed a full suite of test activities and demonstrated all key performance parameters of this transformational aircraft. The pilots completed 173 sorties, totaling 214 mishap-free flight hours, reached, a, reached 305 knots, true airspeed and level flight, with a total of nine different pilots, including five U.S. Army pilot, test pilots. It gives the VFS great pleasure to recognize the Bell V280 team with the Society's Frederick L. Feinberg Award. The next award is the John J. Schneider Historical Achievement Award. This year's recipient is Paul Faltine, Curator Emeritus of the Niagara Aerospace Museum. Paul, would you please come to the stage? Paul has dedicated much of his life to preserving the history and technological achievements of the Buffalo and Niagara Falls aviation history, with a special focus on the early Bell history in the area. The museum houses an impressive display of Bell aircraft and helicopters and countless artifacts. Because of Faltine's efforts, an extensive archive is now, now, stored at the, now stores the closed Bell Aerospace Plant's technical library, project engineering reports, and over 100,000 photographs and negatives which includes much of the early Bell helicopter history. Thank you, Paul, for these extremely important efforts. And now the Vertical Flight Heritage Site Award. This program is intended to recognize and help preserve locations with the most noteworthy and significant contributions made in both the theory and practice of helicopter and other VTOL aircraft te technology. This year, the committee selects the Sikorsky Bridgeport, Connecticut facility. This award will be accepted by Chris Van Buten.
The site is recognized for 70 years, 70 plus years of historic contributions from its start in 1943 as a production site for the world's first production helicopter, the Sikorsky R4, to modern engineering and technological con contributions to the vertical flight products of Sikorsky, a Lockheed Martin company. A large bronze plaque, which weighs 35 pounds, will be installed later this year in ceremonies recognizing Bridgeport, the Bridgeport facility as an official vertical flight heritage site. The next award is the Captain William J. Kostler Award, which is given for the greatest achievement in practical application or operation of a vertical flight aircraft, the value of which has been demonstrated during the preceding year. This year, the awards committee has selected two recipients, one from the Oklahoma National Army, Army National Guard and the other from the U.S. Coast Guard. The committee recognizes the Oklahoma Army National Guard Detachment 1, Company B, 2-149 General Support Aviation Battalion, 2-45 Aviation Regiment. Let me invite Captain Martin Howell, Chief Warrant Officer 3, Zechariah Smith, and Sergeant Nathan Lober from the Army, Oklahoma Army National Guard to please come forward to accept the award on behalf of the entire crew. As they come forward, please direct your attention to the screen. The Oklahoma Army National Guard Detachment 1 crew is recognized for its support of Louisiana State of Emergency Relief efforts during the Category 4 Hurricane Ida in September 2021 by conducting numerous logistics and humanitarian missions. The unit's CH-47F Chinooks and crew moved some 102,000 pounds of critical equipment and airlifted 59 people. The committee also recognizes the U.S. Coast Guard, Air Station Cape Cod, CG-6032 and CG-6039 air crews. Let me invite Commander Brian Coutelet, avionics electrician technician, first class Philip Morales, and John McGonagall of Sikorsky to accept the award. As they make their way forward, please direct your attention to this short video. I was laying in my bunk, and I felt the whole boat shake four levels up. This was something beyond what I could fathom. 60 knot winds, 30 foot seas. I knew it was going to take everything that Canada and the United States Coast Guard had. They said it was taking on water approximately 200 miles or more off of uh, Cape Cod. So we launched to go 200 miles offshore into the dark to assist. I kept thinking that I wanted to get home. And knowing that there was people being lifted and going home gave me hope that I would join them as well. We moved in position. We uh, jettisoned our mask rescue operations raft and um, deployed our pump to the vessel in order to make room for all the survivors. I could hear over all the noise and through my headset, uh, all, the, all the guys in the back just cheering, like as, you know, I'm pulling another person in. Hearing that, like, okay, we can get one more. We, we can get one more. Um, so that's what we did. Everybody took their job seriously and made sure that we were all going to get home safe. It makes everything worth it, being able to see a family reunited after a case like that. The U.S. Coast Guard Air Station Cape Cod Air Crews are recognized for their assistance to the Royal Canadian Air Force to aid a disabled ship approximately 200 nautical miles east of Cape Cod, Massachusetts. The 142-foot-long fishing vessel Atlantic Destiny was taking on water in 35-foot-high 35 seas. The two MH-60T Jayhawk crews delivered dewatering pumps and rescued 21 crew members while battling 50-knot winds. Please stand to thank the Oklahoma Army National Guard and U.S. Coast Guard air crews for their heroic accomplishments.
Our final recognition today is for honorary fellow. This is a status granted to society members whose career-based leadership, vision, or other contributions have advanced significantly the interests of the vertical flight community. The honorary fellow, this was the first award created by the fledgling American Helicopter Society in 1944, and the first recipients were Igor Sikorsky and Colonel Frank Gregory of the U.S. Army. This year's VFS honorary fellow is Phil Aldridge of Sikorsky, a Lockheed Martin company. Mr. Aldridge, would you please come forward? As a member of the VFS for over 40 years, Phil Aldridge has provided extraordinary contributions and innovative leadership in the flight test development, design, and certification of rotorcraft. Phil has been instrumental in developing certification policy for Part 29 rotorcraft with modern fly-by-wire control systems, as well as modernizing existing policy around rotorcraft with traditional mechanical flight control systems. Phil's vision and leadership exemplifies the passion and contributions of VFS honorary fellows. Congratulations, Phil, on becoming the Society's newest honorary fellow. Now, traditionally, the outgoing chair of the board receives an engraved gavel as a small token of thanks. Paul Lemo, the VFS chair for the past year, was unable to, make, to attend today's uh, award ceremony. So I'd like to ask Chris Van Buten of Sikorsky to the podium to accept the award on behalf of Paul Limo. Well, that completes the presentation of awards this morning. With that, let me turn the program back over to Tomas. So I had some emotion shaking hands of guy who saved people, and you know, I think uh, well, it's really, I do it two times, huh? to remember it, and I think uh, every day we wake up in Rotary Wing, we should think uh, that this unique formula which saved your life, huh? and we, have, we, should have, we should have it always in mind. Okay, so I think it's uh, really we should recognize all the team making this uh, vertical flight uh, society forum so successful. Huh? So I am thinking here by the team, the FS team. Valérie, where is Valérie? Julie. <laughs> Betty. <laughs> Anita. Jim, David, Randy, Dan, and of course, Mike. So I would also, we should recognize all the uh, chairs, committee members, BOMP members, technical council members, and all the volunteers. Huh? <laughs> without, their without their contribution, it's not possible, of course. So it's really, must be very energetic, and we, we, can, we should recognize the spontaneous contribution of all the volunteers. And also, I should not forget the Dan Gettinger, uh, master of the ceremony, because I would not be able to do it myself. Huh? So, thank you, thank you a lot. Uh, I would like also, uh, Mike. I noticed that your organization is perfect diversity. Fifty percent female, fifty. So it's really example to follow. It's great. So I think it's, uh, I will give you the hand mic, but it's really a great, great success, this 78th Forum. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>
All right. Thanks so much, Tomas. That was very kind of you. So before everyone breaks and heads to the exhibit hall, the exhibit hall for more coffee, I'd like to ask all of our past Nicolsi lecturers and all of our past Howder Award winners and the Mars helicopter honorees to please come to the stage for some group photos. So everyone else, please exit the ballroom as quickly as possible as the convention staff has to turn over the room for the, for the special sessions in here. They'll begin at 10.15 and please be in the technical sessions at, at 10.15. Let's have one more round of applause for all of our honorees tonight.